Well, good morning, Rock Fellowship, friends, family. Can you go ahead and do me a favor and stand up on your feet? Raise your hands. I know we're streaming, so go ahead and raise an emoji hand as well. And we're going to get ready to give our Lord and Savior the glory and honor that he is due this morning. We're going to sing a familiar song that you know. So go ahead and raise your voices and sing it with us. Come on. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Let's sing verse 2 together with all that hope and all that joy. Let's fill this room. Come on. So take me as you find me. All of my fears and failures. And fill my life again. And give my life to follow everything I believe in. Come on, let's surrender. Now I surrender. climate everything that's going around it's easy to want to dim your light and maybe want to give into fear and hope but I want to encourage you to do the exact opposite and let it shine shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen King Jesus shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Come on, everybody, let's sing it together. Come on. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Come on, wherever you are, whether it's in your bedroom, the living room, sing it. We're singing for the glory of the risen. 
what we do serve indeed a risen savior and that's why we come because he's mighty to save he moves mountains and we're here this morning just to worship to bow down and say you're our god it's a familiar song we want you to sing it with us
down before you, Lord, as our King. King a King who has gone before us. You're my God. Our champion who's fought for us. You all together love me. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. Father, you so faithful to every promise you made. And we come here this Sunday morning to worship you and adore you and say thanks. Thanks with all of our being, with all of our heart, with all of our expression. Thank you for saving us. We who don't deserve it, but because of your amazing grace, you clean and washed us anew to be forever with you and we are so honored to be called yours. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Right where you are seated. Come on, let's give our God a hand clap of praise right now. Come on, if you're in your living room, if you're in the kitchen and watching right now, worshiping, we just want to give God praise. But he is so good. He's been so faithful, and I'm so grateful uh, to be worshiping you with, with you this morning. I'm Pastor Darrell. Welcome to the Rock Fellowship Church. I'm so grateful that you have joined in at your, your stream, and you may be even watching a little later. You know, we start our streaming at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and uh, but if you're coming on a little later, that's fine just to worship with us. This is one of the amazing things that technology gives us the ability to is that uh, we can adjust our schedules and we can worship anytime and anywhere with brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I'm grateful to be with you on this morning and excited about what God is doing, in the, even in the midst of the crazy pandemic, uh, in the midst of some of the, the still civil unrest and what's going on in our country. I believe it's all for our good. I believe, just in Hebrew says, sometimes God's will shake things up so that the unshakable kingdom may be presented, may be manifest. And so right now, this is what we're doing. We're putting the kingdom of God on display in our King, Jesus Christ. And so welcome this morning. I don't have very many announcements, but one thing that we do every Sunday is that on our streaming page right below the recording, right below the screen, there is a connect with us. There's a connect link. Please, if this is your first time worshiping with us, we invite you. Fill that part out. We want to get to know you. We want to connect with you. We want to be able to pray for you, with you, and we make ourselves available to answer any questions you may have. So please fill out that connect link there. And again, if you have prayer requests or praise reports, even throughout the service, please, that's where you place them. And that goes for, even if it's not your first time, if you are a regular, or even one of our members, if you got a praise report, prayer request, we want to engage with you. We want to celebrate with you. We want to pray with you. So please, put that information in the Connect link, and we will follow up with you. For our children's ministry, we say this every Sunday, and we're going to keep saying it because we have great material right there on the Rock Kids link. So parents, if you have children and youth, go there on the Rock Kids link. The link is right here, actually, on the screen as well, rockfellowshipfl.org slash rockkids. Go there. There are handouts. There's curriculum. There are videos. Utilize those. Use them today. Use them throughout the week. But one thing we do, we don't want to neglect the growth, the spiritual growth, and the maturity the maturation, the process of what we call sanctification. I'm going to use all these words because I want our children and our youth to continue to grow in their faith, to know that God made them, God loves them, and God has a mission and plan for them right where they are now and in the future. So please utilize that information, and I promise you, your children and your family will be blessed. You won't be sad that you did. You'll actually be glad. So please go on to the link. And be able, you can download, you can print off however you want to use it, but the material is there. Also, we have, again, this Wednesday, we will not have Bible study. We're taking just a two-week hiatus, and we'll pick it back up July the 8th. So this Wednesday, there's no Zoom Bible study. Uh, that don't mean don't study your Bible. On your own, individually, stay in the word, be prayerful, study it for yourself. And then next week, July the 8th, we will come together again for Zoom Bible study. And then later on in um, the summer and going even into the fall, 
we'll be picking back up on some of our groups. And so I'm excited about that because these are just different ways we can connect and connect at deeper levels as we stir up one another t towards love and good deeds as we encourage one another as we wait for the return of our Lord. So this is that thing where iron sharpens iron and we want to sharpen one another in the faith. Lastly, um, starting the first week of July, we will be picking up our summer series and we're going to be going through the book of Colossians. Our, our, our series title is Christ Supreme. And so we're going to be diving into the book of Colossians and we're going to look at verse by verse, word by word, phrase by phrase, pericope by pericope. You know I like that word. For my members, y'all know I like to use that word. Uh, passage by passage, we're going to dissect and really dive in, and we're going to go just straight from the Word of God, what God is speaking to us, what we can learn of God and our faith through the book of Colossians. And I'm really excited about this. So we're going to be kicking that off in July, starting that first Sunday of July. Well, at this time, I'm going to invite you to go ahead, get your Bibles ready. Go ahead, get your pens ready, uh, your smart devices, however you want to. Dive into your Bible and take notes, but I want you to get those things together. And we have a, a great honor today. Um, we have an awesome man of God, a dynamic preacher that's going to be bringing the word to us today. And uh, it's Dr. Eric Cummings, who's the pastor of... Um, it's, it's over in Carroll City. It's New Life Baptist Church of Carroll City. New Life Baptist Church of Carroll City. And they have been such a blessing to us. They're our sending church as a church plant. You know, they're our Florida sending church. And they have shown us so much love. And not only is Eric the pastor of New Life, but he's also the president of the Florida Baptist Convention. And with all those accolades, let me tell you all something. I'm glad to call him a friend. He is a true friend brother in Christ. He is serious about the Lord. He loves the Lord. He love, loves the Lord's people, and he's serious about the Word of God, and I'm so honored and so blessed to call him friend and to have him bring the Word today. So get your Bibles ready. Go ahead and get your note pads ready, and I want you to be attentive to what the Word is going to say and how the Lord is going to be speaking through our brother, Pastor Eric Cummins. Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning. It's such a blessing to be here with you on today. I want to thank my dear brother and friend, uh, Pastor Daryl Jones, his wonderful wife, Kamika, and the entire Rock Fellowship family for the privilege and the opportunity to be here with you on today on this Lord's Day. It is my prayer that in the midst of all that's going on, that for just a few moments as we walk through the Word of God, you will find encouragement, you will find enrichment, you will find inspiration and information but I pray that you're trusting God to bring the transformation that you so desperately may need in this season of your life. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? Father, we thank you and we praise you for the songs that have been sang. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers and praises that have been uttered and gone forth. We pray now as we break the bread of life, which is your holy word, that you would speak to our hearts, our minds, and our souls, arrest our wandering thoughts, remove anything that will preoccupy our minds or potentially stand in the way of a divine appointment in your presence. We thank you, dear God, for all you've done and what you're doing, but we're trusting you, God, for what you're about to bring forth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For just a few moments, I want to call your attention to the 13th Psalm. There are some powerful, profound words in the first six verses of the 13th Psalm that speak specifically to you and I today where we may find ourselves in the midst of the global pandemic that we've been dealing with, not only in our world, but even maybe in your life in some ways. Simply put, all of us have been affected by what is taking place around us, either directly or indirectly. But there's a word from the Lord today that I pray will help and encourage you as you walk through this season. Psalm 13, beginning at verse number one from the Christian Standard Version, it reads, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I store up anxious concerns within me? Agony in my mind every day. How long will my enemy dominate me? Verse number three, consider me and answer, Lord my God, restore brightness to my eyes. Otherwise, I will sleep in death. My enemy will say I have triumphed over him and my foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. 
I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me generously. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing and doing of his holy word. For just a few moments, I want to talk to you uh, from this subject, and that is simply the question that you see there in verse number one, how long, Lord? All of us have had how long, Lord, moments, moments in which we begin to struggle with the present realities of our lives, whether we're dealing with something directly personal and private in our lives, whether it impacts us professionally on our, on our jobs, whether it's something that we're dealing with from a public stance and our public existence in the world in which we live. But all of us have been confronted by how long moments. In fact, we've had some difficult moments over the last few months, even as our nation presently continues to mourn uh, the, this global pandemic and the cultural chaos that surrounds it. We all are struggling to try to find equilibrium and balance in the midst of a pressure soaked society. How do we do that? We've had challenges in our health. We've had challenges in our family. We've had challenges in our finances. We've had challenges maybe even in ways that only you and God are aware of because those are the things you've cried out to him about. But whatever the situation, it is only by the grace of God Almighty that we've made it to this day in this moment. And there's a reason for the rain in our lives. There's a reason for the pain in our lives. And it is even in those seasons that we grow. In fact, in our text, it seemed that God had forgotten David. David's wrestling with some of the things he had hidden himself uh, from. He feels that God had hidden himself from him and that there has been a disconnect. And he wanted to know, uh, is, is, is this, this time of waiting for David seemed like it was forever. For you and I, there are times when, uh, listen, the hardest thing about waiting is knowing how long will we have to wait. We live in a microwave society, which things are instant, quick, and rapid, but yet there are times in which God puts us and places us in a holding pattern, and as he places us in these holding patterns, it is in that season that oftentimes we ask questions like this, how long, Lord? Here it is, David being pursued by Saul. And he has a lot of time on his hands as he's hiding out and as he's holed up in one of the desolate wilderness places in Judah and surrounding areas. He begins to ponder and think about these things. And as he's pondering and thinking about these things, it must have seemed that the hours, the days, the weeks were just piling up and it seemed like it dragged on forever. But here David asked in verse number one, how long, Lord? We have been pressed in uh, adjusting our lifestyles, adjusting the way we go about things, and oftentimes saying, God, won't you hurry this thing up? Won't you speed it up? But so often God says, wait. Maybe in your present circumstance, he's saying to you, wait. But one of the things I want us to see over these next few moments in Psalm 13 is that God gives David some specific instructions, uh, some specific, if you will, encouragements or admonishments that David has made up in his mind that he will adjust accordingly so that while he's in this season of waiting, he will maximize it. There are four things I want you to see, and the first is in verse number three. Note he simply says, consider me and answer, Lord my God, Restore brightness to my eyes, otherwise I will sleep in death. One of the things I see here is that David has come to a place that he recognized that while he waits, he needs to continue to pray. And I think that's one of the things that you and I must realize. We have to continue to pray while we're waiting. We're waiting for change. We're waiting for breakthrough. We're waiting for things to cease or to get better. But David continues to cry out to God, consider me an answer. Note, he says, he's pouring out his heart to God. He's being clear and letting him know that, that even in the midst of this, I, I want you to think of me, God, and I want you to answer me. And for you and I, we cannot give up praying even when it seems that God is far away. And in your condition right now, in your circumstance, it may seem that God is far away, but he's still there. And you've got to continue to have that conversation with him every day, every opportunity. In fact, most of us as believers, we fail to grow to maturity 
and be to be able to get to that place where God uses us in a mighty way, in a great way, because simply we get to a place that we have wrapped our minds around this thought of thinking that God is so distant, so far away. And so then we shrug our shoulders and just say, well, I'll go back to doing what I've been doing all the while. But listen, we've got to continue and push and press and understand that we've got to continue to look to God in prayer. Most of the least attended gatherings in church life are prayer times. And it's simply because prayer is work. And we have to put in the work, purpose in our hearts, purpose in our minds, that we're going to continue to pray. Our prayers should be concerned for God's glory, not just for happiness. To know that in the midst of the changes in life, the difficulties of life, the challenges of life, God will use these seasons to some way bring glory out of the situation. And and even when you begin to look at your circumstances, and they often seem so large and so great, don't forget it is in prayer that you realize that the God you serve is far greater than the problems you're dealing with. But you've got to continue to talk to him. Prayer keeps us and gives us an awareness of not only God's presence, but also an awareness of God's power. And it is in the power of God that in our lives, he meets us where we are, and he's able to give us peace in the midst of the present storms and perplexities of our lives and conditions. But we've got to continue to pray. And so sometimes when we're waiting, sometimes when the weight is heavy, God is placing you and I and allowing us to come to a place where we come to the end of ourselves. And when we come to an end of ourselves, that's when we realize that we must totally, completely, and wholeheartedly rely on him. When your friend list has been exhausted, when there's nobody else to call, you can't even call Tyrone, you can't call anybody but God himself, and when you continue to pray, God meets you right where you are. But you got to continue to pray. Oh, I know what a how long Lord moment is like. I've had them. I'm having them. There are many times you've got to understand, even in the midst of following through with what God has ordained and planned in life, you're going to run into those moments. But you got to be willing to trust him. I heard it this way. It it was in uh, 50s communist Russia. The Communist Party put out a heavy assault upon the underground Christian church. And they put these big signs up on all of the church walls that said the reign of Christ is over. And in the midst of prayer and discussion, the church came together and said, listen, as we look at these signs, all we have to do is add one thing and it changes the meaning of what's being said. The sign said the reign of Christ is over, but as they prayed and began to focus on God, they decided to go under the cover of darkness and add the word all at the end of every sign. So then every sign said the reign of Christ is over all. What am I saying? If you just add one thing, add a steady diet of prayer to your daily life, you will find that even as you wait, God will give you everything to change your perspective to move forward. We got to continue to pray. But there's more. If you look with me in verse number five, David changes and moves from the how long Lord question of verse one to now you see him finding more hope because in verse five he says, but I have trusted in your faithful love. Listen, he's showing you and I that even while we're in the midst of those moments, not only must we continue to pray, but we've also got to continue to trust God. Who are you trusting today? It's relatively easy to have faith when things are going well. But the test of faith is when things do not appear to be going well, that you then begin to say, I'm still going to trust God, even though I can't really trace his hand right now. I can trust his heart. Note in verse five, David has not yet been delivered, but he trusts in the loving kindness of God. In the NIV, it says unfailing love. That means he has experienced his love. This is a love that has never let him down. It is a love that never fails. And in the unfailing love of God, the faithful love of God has given him a calm assurance, a blessed assurance, if you will, that allows him to continue to move forward. And so his heart is filled with joy. 
And his heart is filled with joy as he thinks about the deliverance that God will bring at some point. That simply means I may not see it today. I may not experience it in this moment. But as I continue to trust God, I believe and know that as I've looked at over time, in every season of my life, I've seen the hand of God show up just when it needed to show up. For you and I, as we trust God, we've got to understand it didn't happen accidentally either. Note in verse number five, he says the first two words, but I have continued to trust, meaning it was personal in nature. It's it's emphatic in Hebrew. Simply, it, it points to his deliberate choice to rely on God's loyal love. He, he has made an intentional choice. He's choosing to interpret his circumstance by God's love rather than to interpret God's love by his circumstance. He has made up his mind and in a time of trial, in a time of pain, in a time of difficulty, Satan tries to get us to doubt the love of God and you and I have got to realize that we have to trust God. Never doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. Got to continue to trust him. And if I'm going to continue to trust him, if we're going to continue to trust him, when the temptation comes to pull us away from the heart of God, the word of God, the will of God, the way of God, we've got to continue to trust him. Romans 8 and 28 reminds us, for we know in all things God works him out for the better, for our good, according to those who have been called to his purpose. That means we can know that God's going to work this out. It was Joseph in Genesis 50 and 20 that he knows that God will take that which was meant for evil and use it ultimately for our good. So we deliberately choose daily to trust God's loyal love. Oh, my friends, I pray that you would trust God today. I pray that you won't allow the headlines to weigh on you in such a point that you toss and turn through the night. That You won't allow the chatter to pull you away from the heart of God but that you will continue to gain strength in knowing that you can depend on Jesus Christ. We can depend on his grace, his love, and his mercy in seasons such as these. But since God love stems from his unchanging nature, rather than our feeble effort, we know that we can depend on it. If I was dependent on myself, I'd be in trouble. But because I'm dependent on a holy God who firms up my steps, who orders and directs and leads and guides, who knows, sees, understands, and cares. He's able to usher us and lead us to where we need to be and to get us through our present circumstance. Oh, it reminds me of one of my favorite Saturday morning cartoons when I was younger. I used to like to watch the ones that dealt with the special secret agents. And there was one in particular, uh, the episode I remember involved an agent. He was going into his supervisor's office to get his assignment. And they told him he needed to go from New York City and to fly to Moscow. And when he arrived to Moscow, they would let him know specifically what his instructions would be. And so he boards the plane. And as he was doing, he says, I I, I really am not comfortable going to Moscow without knowing what's going to happen when I get there. And they specifically said to him that you are on a need to know basis. As he boards the plane, he gets to Moscow, and when he gets off, he finds that he was met by a car. The car took him to an apartment, and when he got there, everything he needed for the assignment was in the apartment in Moscow. What the agent didn't know was that his supervisor had already made all preparations. Brothers and sisters, all he needed to do was trust the instructions. God has made every preparation for you and me. He's made everything laid out. He has put it together. The question is, will you trust his instructions? Even when God tells you to do something that seems risky, whenever he calls you outside of your comfort zone, whenever you're being pinched and squeezed, it's not a matter of whether you're going to make it out or make it through. The question is, can you stand the season of being pinched and squeezed? Ultimately, you've got to know that God has made all the preparations. Not only must we continue to trust God and continue to pray. Verse number five, the latter portion gives us even more. He says, my heart will rejoice in your deliverance. Now, he moves here from making up his mind to pray, making up his mind to trust God. But here now in the latter part of verse five, he's going to continue to rejoice. You and I have to understand there is always going to be trials. He did not rejoice in the trials. He's rejoicing in the salvation. Look what he says. My heart will rejoice 
in your deliverance. Note here, his circumstances had not changed one bit from the start of the song. They had not altered since he said, how long, Lord? When he felt confused, when he was depressed, when he felt forsaken by God. All of that is still real. But, but David was still, even at this moment, hiding in the caves. Saul was still on the throne trying to kill him. But yet, something changed. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think was changed? I'm going to tell you what it is. His focus changed. He stopped looking at his circumstance. He stopped focusing on himself and his problems at the start of the psalm, and he has now shifted his thoughts to God's loyal love, his unfailing love, and the salvation that only he can bring. And so the challenge today is that we have to continue to rejoice in the midst of difficult times, uncertain times, trying times, because we have to understand if we can continue to look at what's wrong or we can look to the hills from which our help comes and rejoice at what God's going to make right. You got to continue to rejoice. Listen, there are times when you can get some news that's heavy. I I've recently got some heavy news. And even when I think about it, it's still heavy. But yet, I still have to realize that God is good. That, that if I shift my focus, if I stop weighing on that which is heavy, if I shift my attention from that which is weighing me down and I can move from a place of confusion and a place of feeling depressed and, and, and move to a place of joy and praise. And sometimes we've got to recognize we have just got to find a way to say thank you, Lord, and give him praise, give him glory and give him honor. Sometimes even when nobody's around, you've got to just simply say thank you, Lord, for his faithfulness and his love because there were times you didn't even have time to utter the prayer and God stepped in and made a way for you. Got to continue to rejoice. God is still on the throne. He is still at work. He is still in the midst of what's going on in your situation and circumstance. The question is, will you continue to rejoice? Listen, again, one of the challenges that we're all facing today is our lives have been changed. They've been turned around. They've been altered. From the youngest to the most seasoned, uh, they have been altered. Uh, things are not the same right now. And as we begin to adjust, what we find is that God cannot be confined to a box. Even as we worship him today, virtually, what you understand is that God has already paved the way so that we can still glorify him, magnify his holy name, worship and praise him. And so for that alone, we ought to still rejoice. But here in verse number six, he kind of comes into this place. He says, I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me generously. Now, I want you to see what, what's happened here. He's gone from a place of making up his mind to pray, crying out to God. He's, he's made up his mind to trust God. He's made up his mind to rejoice. But here it is in verse six, he makes up his mind to continue to worship. Look what he says, I will sing to the Lord. In spite of everything he's been through, he can still see the goodness of God Almighty. He remembers all that God has done for him. He remembers uh, all of God's faithfulness. And he recognizes that even when God seems distant, he was able to come to a place of deliberately trusting in God's unfailing love. However the winds of circumstance are blowing, he's trusting God. He's leaning on him. And so he worships. And even as he wrote in Psalm 103, verse 11, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. You can count on it. Even when your circumstances seem opposite, seem contrary to what's going on, he is only taking you through the difficulty to develop maturity and godly character. Listen, one of the things I recognize in this pandemic is this. God is not so much concerned today about our comfort as much as he's concerned about building and developing our character. So sometimes you've got to come out of what's comfortable. You've got to come out of that which is easy. You've got to come out of that which you have done uh, by a certain way over a period of time. 
And then you must lean and wholeheartedly trust him that in the midst of all of this, even in our worship places and worship houses, we have not been able to get together and worship God in those places. But guess what? You can still worship God right in your living room, right in your bedroom, right as you sit on your patio or porch. You can still worship God. It's just the intentional, deliberate decision that in the midst of this, I will sing to the Lord. So what songs will you sing? What will you choose to do now? But understand even today, God is working. You may say it's been months, but God is working. You may be saying today it's been years, but God is still working. You may say it's been weeks, but God is still working. And you've been pressed and pushed on your job. You've been pressed and pushed in your home life. You're being pressed and pushed in those private moments that only you and God are aware of. But in the midst of it all, God is working. So I want to challenge you to shift your focus. We can talk all day about what's wrong. We can talk all day about what we think should be done. But at the end of the day, we have to trust God and we have to trust his plan. Because what we've got to know is that even when you say it's been months and years, sometimes you got to understand that's the way the God we serve works. My dad used to tell me all the time that he was praying prayers that his eyes would never see answered. And he, 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 he would always say, I'm, I'm praying for family members to come to Christ, understanding that when God chooses to answer that prayer, I may be long gone. And I noticed that there are people he prayed for who didn't come to know Christ until God had already called him home. He never saw it with his physical eyes. But he prayed the prayer believing that in God's own way and in his own time, he will answer. And so what we do today is so very important and pertinent to those that we love, to those that we serve, to those that we deal with on a daily basis. But it's also very critical to what God is doing in our lives. And so maybe as you gather to watch this worship today, you had that question like David, how long, Lord? And so I want to challenge you today. Make up in your mind as you wait to pray, to continue to trust, to continue to rejoice, and to just worship God in this season. And as you worship God, what you're going to find is this. Your trust in the living God will continue to grow. Because what you're going to recognize is that not only God sees your today, your right now, he's fully aware of your yesterday, and he's already in your future. And so in this moment, right now, what are you going to do with it? And so as you begin to praise and worship God, as you begin to trust him, it always brings perspective to your problems. No matter what I've been dealing with in my life, all it takes is a phone call, an email, or a news headline or news report to give me perspective about the challenges I may find myself faced with. Sometimes I find it help, helpful to just look back on my life and see how God's hand has moved and just thank the Lord for how he has moved and brought me to this point and place in my life in the midst of my own personal struggles, in the midst of my difficulties, in the midst of my disappointments, in the midst of my bereavements, it, it helps to remember how through it all, as in verse 6, he says, he has been good to me. And so you may say, how long, Lord? Just remember, God's been good to you. And he's been so good that he, all he wants today is your full attention. He wants your full attention. And the way you can give God your full attention is to consider your most important relationship, your most vital relationship, your most crucial relationship, and that is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we're living in different days and different times, it's important that we take stock of that most important relationship. And the best way to take stock of that is to make sure we're in right relationship with him. Listen, if today you recognize that you are out of relationship with Christ, you don't know him. You're lost. And you know that that's the first step you need to make in your life as you wait for God to bring about change in your circumstances and conditions. I want to encourage you and implore you 
to surrender your life to Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans 3 and 23 that all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. There are no big eyes or little use in Christ. We're on level ground at the foot of the cross. But then in 1 John 1, 9, he says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And so today, if you want or you recognize you need to surrender your life to Christ, listen, right there on the screen, uh, there's a connect button there. Follow those steps. And I'm sure the Rock Fellowship staff will get with you specifically and give you direction based on your decision today. Maybe it's not just surrendering your life to Christ. Maybe you need to recommit your life to Christ. Because when all of this pressure started, when all of these things changed, you walked away from praying. You walked away from trusting God. You walked away from rejoicing and worshiping. You need to come back home to the heart of God and hit the reset button and recommit your life to Christ. If that's you, maybe that's something you want to give consideration to today. Maybe you have a special prayer need. Connect. Do just that. And I'm going to be praying with you and for you that even in this how long, Lord, season, you'll continue your purpose in your heart and your mind to continue to pray, to continue to trust, to continue to rejoice, and to continue to worship. Continue to worship. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your love and your grace. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. We pray, oh God, that you would move at the very point of our need. In some cases, you know full well because we've articulated those things. And in some cases, those requests have remained unspoken. But God, because you are sovereign and you are more than able, I pray that you move in the lives of your people. I pray, God, that we would all empty ourselves out before you, allow you, dear God, to fill us until we overflow. So now, Lord, may your will be done in your way in the lives of your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, family. Thank you. Thank you, my brother, Pastor Cummins. I know that you all were blessed uh, as much as I was. I love to hear my brother preach. Um, he's going to be in that word, and he's going to give it to you just like the Lord is giving it to us. And I'm so grateful to have him come here. Uh, and Rock Fellowship know that I've already been planning having him come give us the word in person. So uh, soon when we get back to gathering, whenever the Lord allows that, we'll get them back again so we can love on them in person. But uh, I'm so grateful for my brother to bring such a powerful message and uh, that our focus be reshifted, that all the distractions that our focus remain on the Lord. Well, Father, uh, family, one of the things that you know we do every Sunday after our word is that we continue in worship in our time of giving. And our time of giving is just that. If you're a visitor, if you're a first-time watcher, if you're somebody that comes in and out, uh, we characterize, we categorize giving as an act of worship because it is an expression of our thankfulness, of our gratitude, our surrender, and our dependence on the Lord. For He is our source, and everything He uses in our lives are resources that He provides for us so that we can live out the mission that He's birthed us to do that he's purposed us to do so for uh, our, our members as you prepare your tithes and your offerings and giving uh for visitors this is your first time coming on uh there's no obligation there's no expectation but if this ministry has fed you if you enjoyed the worship and you want to support this local ministry so that we can do and fulfill the mission god has given us in our context we invite you to give and we have different options we have uh giving online rockfellowshipfl.org slash give we, you, know, you can go there. It's a form you fill out real easy, real simple. There's a cash app. If you like that, if that's good for your record keeping, it's the handle, the, the dollar sign handle, Rock Fellowship FL. And then if text to give works for you, you can go on there, 786-686-3383. So we invite you. Um, we love you and we thank you for your generosity, for your obedience, for your faithfulness so that we can fulfill and do all that God has called us to do and we can meet our responsibilities and stay strong during this pandemic. Um, and for there are some that still want to mail in. We have a P.O. box for you if that works better for you. And we're grateful for uh, your generosity in mailing it in. You may not want to use all the technology and maybe something may get lost, but you want to just send it in the mail. Thank you so much. And we have the P.O. Box 298442. That's P.O. Box 298442. That's Pembroke Pines, Florida. 
33029. It's right there on the screen. And again, we are so grateful for your generosity and your faithfulness. Um, this Sunday has been great. I'm excited about what the Lord has in store for the rest of this summer. I, and that can sound crazy. That sounds like the pastoral thing to say because uh, July's coming. I, I, I'm on social media some, and I see, you know, every month something crazy happen. Some people expecting Godzilla might show up in July or some, or, you know, uh, the gremlins going to get wet and they're going to multiply. I don't know. We're we going to see what July throws at us. But as Pastor Cummins said, we, we know who's on the throne. We know who's in charge. And the craziness, we know God is in control. Nothing has slipped through his fingers. He's not surprised by anything. And one thing he's doing for sure is he's getting our attention. What matters? And we find out we need to be looking towards him. And so uh, I'm grateful for you. I love you all. I'm going to pray and dismiss, and I want you to enjoy the rest of your Sunday and the rest of your week. Father, thank you so much. Send us out on your care and presence. Help us. Lord, may we be wise. Uh, I pray. Um, for our members, everybody watching right now, I pray that you keep us coronavirus free, Lord. It's, it's, the pandemic is spreading, especially even in our context in South Florida, Lord. So I pray for protection, uh, wisdom, wear our masks, we wash our hands, do what we need to do to stay healthy and strong, Lord. And, you know, if somebody comes down with it, we had one member recently just got wind that they were positive. I pray uh, that there's no, it doesn't get worse. I pray that she's able to recover at home and, um, and, and, and grow stronger and through this process, Lord, we know even through crazy times like this, uh, she grows deeper in her faith. So when she gets healthy, she's even more on fire for the Lord. Lord, you're our source. You're our everything, and we are so grateful to be called yours. Send us out on your care. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we see you next Sunday. You call me to the daybreak. Teach me to soar. Your spirit builds up courage, raising this heavy soul. My skyward trail is guarded, my heart armored in mercy. Lord, you go be for you're the bridge out every crevice, the promise of salvation. Jesus, I will rise. In Jesus, I will.